Good morning, everyone. It has been a day or two, I think, since we got out and got skunked. Uh, not completely skunked, but more or less skunked. Today we are actually going on a little bit of a road trip over to South Carolina, so I will check in with you guys when we get to our destination. Uh, it's really early right now, so I've got quite the drive ahead of me, and uh, hopefully we'll get there right around the time it starts to warm up today, and we'll be able to turn up some snakes. So, anyways, I'm going to get this drive out of the way, and I will check in with you guys when I get there. Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful, relatively warm March morning here in upstate South Carolina. And I'm out here with Tristan and Yachten hiking through some pretty brutal habitat right now on our way to what will hopefully be a little bit better of habitat. And uh, the big thing we're hoping to find in this region today is a Scarlet King. So this is an area I've never even really hurt before. So even if we miss our main target, I'm just excited to get boots on the ground in this, this general region because there is a lot of potential and it's a very exciting area. So we're going to whack our way through this kind of nasty stuff in order to hopefully pop out in some pristine Scarlet King habitat. So I will check in with you guys when we get to our main destination for the day. All right, guys, we're getting into some, some nicer habitat here. It's not as hostile. Nice pine woods, but we're here in the mountains of South Carolina, so it's not really a typical area to look for Scarlet King snakes. But they are known from this region, so we're going to get into it, and hopefully we'll be able to turn one up. And if not, hopefully we'll at least see some, you know, various common snakes. There's a good chance there could be some rattlesnakes out today, too. So we're in the right type of habitat for it. Look at this. It's like a bog. Damn. There's some sundews growing over here in the mountains of North or of South Carolina. That is ridiculous. And ridiculously cool. Ring neck. First snake of the day. All right, guys, so here's our first snake of the day that we have gotten a good look at. Yachten saw something earlier that got away, but first snake that we've got a good look at, a nice northern ring neck. You can tell this guy's a northern because his belly is solid yellow, no pattern at all. So that's actually very unique compared to what we normally see in Georgia. So it's a little bit different, even if it's nothing crazy, but it's a nice find to start the day. So we're going to put this guy back under his rock and keep hoping for a milk or a scarlet king or... I mean, there's a whole slew of really cool stuff that we could find out here. So we're going to put this guy back and get back to it. Well, that's a weird one to see in this habitat. We're on a dry, open rock face in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And we have this guy. Definitely not the, uh, the species I would expect to see in this habitat, but it's a nice addition to the diversity for the day. So here's something kind of cool. We've still only seen the one ring neck snake wise. There's actually some spermatophores in here too. Oh man, they must have been right there. like last couple nights probably. Yeah. So there's some spotted salamander spermatophores there and then a ton of nice fresh egg masses here. You can see these guys are nice and blue. Really good looking eggs actually attached to a living fern. There's one right here too. But we've seen quite a few just random spotted salamander breeding pools and including in a, an active road ditch <laughs> that we saw coming up the mountain. There was like a flooded tire rut in the road that had a bunch of spotted eggs in it. So these guys are definitely making do with what they have available in this area, which is cool to see. <laughs> so the day has not really gone very well snake wise, but that right there is my first green salamander in South Carolina. And he is very small for comparison. He is, I mean, I'm guessing this baby was born in the fall, right? Yeah. So he's only a couple months old. And you can see they're born well equipped for clambering around on these rock faces. So really cool. Normally we'd be pretty excited about one of these, but, but th because this guy is so small, it's not gonna be really possible to get a good photo of him. So we're just gonna leave him alone. But really cool salamanders nonetheless. And nice to see one in South Carolina. All right guys, well the day is kind of winding down here and it has been very unproductive so far. Aside from the green salamander and the, the ring neck, we really haven't even seen much worth noting that we can't find at home. So uh, it has been a little bit of a bust, but it's been good hanging out with these guys. And we're about to hit our last spot of the day where we're mostly going to be looking for salamanders. So hopefully we can turn up a few things here at the end of the day. 
to kind of at least cap off the day with a couple of herbs. So we're gonna get out into this floodplain habitat and try to turn up some manders. There's actually one species here that would be a lifer for me, the uh, Chamberlain's dwarf salamander, which used to be synonymous with a lot of the other dwarf salamanders, but they've recently been split into a bunch of different species with Chamberlain I being the last one I haven't seen. So that's the big goal today, or at least this afternoon. Here's our first good salamander at this spot. We saw some larvae, but this is a the friendly neighborhood Desmognathus conanti, the spotted dusky salamander. Very nice, but we're just gonna put him, oh, well, he's gonna put himself back in the creek. So Yachtin just yeah, raked up. Just this guy. They're all in the tussocks. <laughs> <laughs> this is my lifer Chamberlain's dwarf salamander, or true Chamberlain eye for, for people who have been paying attention to dwarf salamander taxonomy, because the, uh, the hillocyte used to be considered Chamberlain eye, at least in Georgia, and now we know that they're actually a different species. So big thanks to Yachtin for digging around in this grass until he found a salamander. That's <laughs> what I do. Well, even if we didn't get any of our ambitious snake targets today, picking up a lifer salamander is always a fantastic day. And uh, big shout out to Yachtin and Tristan for kind of having these guys figured out. And uh, Yachtin was able to actually turn this guy up at a spot that Tristan had scouted and has been trying to kind of pick up records in this area for him. So really a great way to end the day. Uh, really one of the highlights of the day, the highlight of the day, if I'm being honest, because... We haven't seen much else, but really interesting salamanders. These are guys are very small, just like the Hillis's dwarf salamanders. So yeah, we're gonna return this guy to his little grass tussock and we're gonna keep working this habitat. But my wife or Chamberlain's dwarf salamander here in upstate South Carolina. All right guys, Yachtin found another little Chamberlain eye. This one's a more typical looking one and a male. You can see he's actually got a little bit of pattern on him. That last one was almost solid orange or yellowy orange which was a really cool look, but this is what I think they're more typically gonna look like. But really cool looking salamanders, and I'm glad we could add them to my life list today. It's been a great way to end a not so great day, and <laughs> we're gonna work this habitat for a bit longer. There could be mud salamanders here, so that would be an awesome addition. If we can turn one of those guys up. Dope. I contributed with my own Chamberlain eye double flip. These guys were just under these little sticks right here. <laughs> it's hard to really call them logs. <laughs> Just like the hillisai, these guys tend to tend to like to hang out under little tiny pieces of cover and deep in the grass and moss. So we've actually racked up four of these guys now. I actually just found our fifth Chamberlain eye. Three of them were right here in this one little area. Very nice. As you can tell, it's getting dark on us out here, so I'm going to have to whip out the flashlight if we find anything else. Here is yet another one. This one's as flipped, so you can kind of see how we're finding them. As you can see... Just a little bitty salamander under a very tiny log. So apparently these are kind of a big deal around here, but there is a nice marbled salamander. Might even be my first from South Carolina. I feel like it's not, but... It's definitely I, your first from the upper peak. Yeah, it's the first from, my first from South Carolina upstate, so very nice. So like one log over from the first one, we have a triple flip of marbled salamanders. Very nice. All right, guys, well, darkness is falling. The peepers are calling and I got a long drive home. So we're probably gonna wrap this one up here and I'm definitely gonna have to continue it in the future because we did not see too much today, but what we did see was pretty cool. So uh, I'm gonna wrap this up here and I will see you guys probably tomorrow. They're what like white. on earth? There's some like really light ones. Look at that. Look at that one. There's a fish in there too. There's a couple of fish. Yo, get some forbidden boba out. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is day three of trying to make this video because it has been a little bit slow the last couple outings. And uh, today is going to be really nice. It's going to be about 77 and overcast. And then tonight we're going to get some rain. So should be a pretty good day to be out in the field. I'm out here with Yachtin again and Reed and we're gonna get to it. So we're gonna be mostly creek walking today with hopes of seeing a king snake and uh, whatever else we can turn up really. We're not gonna be too picky about it. So 
It's pretty cool right now, but it's supposed to get up to around 77 degrees today, which is gonna be real good since it's overcast. So we're gonna get to walking and I will update you guys when we find stuff. Well, here's our first snake of the day. Just flipped a nice ring neck. This is about all we've seen in this video snake wise so far, but anyways, here's yet another one. This guy is chilling with some termites under this rock. All right, guys, just secured our next snake of the day a little bit further down the trail. Here's a nice Midland water snake. Something we were expecting to see good numbers of today and we'll probably see plenty more of. But he gave me a nice little love bite as we uh, grabbed him when he jumped in the creek. But decent red coloration on this one. Not nearly as vibrant as some of the ones we saw in the earlier episodes this month. But still a really nice looking water snake. Very healthy. And uh, probably the first of many we're going to see today. So we'll put this guy back in his bush and get back to hiking. Here's a look at the belly on this guy. <laughs> He's definitely mellowed out since we first caught him. He was freaking out, but good looking snake is our first big snake of the day. Hopefully the first of many to come. There's a nice little Southern red back. I know we haven't been seeing as many of these as we normally do in the winter, but here is yet another one in an area that I have not seen many at all, actually kind of assumed that they weren't even really in this area until we found this guy today. So it's kind of an interesting find, even though they are super common. All right, guys, well, Reed flipped our next snake of the day. This is a little Eastern worm snake. These guys have been fairly common this year so far, but not nearly as numerous as, as they should be by this point in the spring. But anyways, nice little snake, very common though. So we're just gonna put him back under his rock. <laughs> so here's another worm snake. Yachten flipped a few minutes later. This guy's actually got a split scale on one side and a few scale on the other, which means he's roughly half Eastern, half Midwestern. Really interesting. <laughs> so uh, this is probably a pretty perfect example of an intergrade zone where you get a little bit of Midwestern, a little bit of Eastern, and a little bit of both in some animals. So really interesting. Even if they're not the most exciting snakes, they're still very interesting ecology going on behind the scenes where you get a little mixture of subspecies here in the Atlanta area. So here's an example, you can see what I mean uh, with my camera that has the macro lens. You can see this side, The uh, I think this is called the prefrontal scale, I believe. This scale right here is split, and then on this side it's fused. So this side is diagnostic of a Midwestern worm snake, and this side is diagnostic of an Eastern. This is a nice little eastern narrowmouth reed just flipped. I know we saw a metric ton of these a couple videos back, but they're not quite as common in this area. Definitely not a rare frog by any means, but not something I was expecting to see today. All right, guys, just walked down to the creek and nabbed our next snake. Here's another nice Midland water snake. This guy's really lanky and all around has a kind of similar pattern and coloration to the first one we saw, but he's just not as big. And not quite as healthy. This guy actually looks like he kind of needs a meal, so we're gonna leave him to it. But next Midland water snake of the day, a nice young male. Here's our first queen snake of the day. Actually coming out of this riffle here. That's really cool. You do. Hey buddy. Look at that nice queen. Well this guy is a lifer for Reed and it's kind of one of the things we were hoping to see today so that's pretty cool. There's another queen snake up in the bush right there. Very nice. Anyways, we're just gonna leave that guy right there. He's chilling. But very nice, second queen snake of the day. All right guys, so I was walking up here and there's a bunch of cactus, so I was being very careful about where I was putting my feet. And sitting right there was, uh, was that. Just a titanic, super reduced pattern Eastern King Snake with a black belly. <laughs> that is a fantastic snake. Basically what we were really hoping to see today. 
nice big king snake. That is fantastic. Doesn't get much better than that. I mean, that is that is nothing short of a unit for North Georgia. These snakes get a lot bigger in South Georgia than they do up here in the Atlanta area. And that is, I mean, that's about as big as you'll see them without finding an absolute monster in this region. <laughs> what an animal. All right, we're gonna go put this guy back over in his little pile of rock and cactus that he was basking in and uh, see if we can find another one. It feels pretty good out here aside from the wind. It's pretty ideal king snake weather, so we have a good chance of seeing another one, I think. And if not, maybe we'll see a couple more common things. Look at all this cactus. I mean, this king was just sitting in this stuff when I first spotted him. He was over here. Y'all good for me to release him? Okay. We're gonna let him go right here where he was basking. This area where he was initially at. There he goes. What a big snake. So awesome. Well, that makes the day for me. But like I said, we're gonna keep at it and see if we can get a second one. So the king was right there and there's some kind of other black snake right there that I think is a big racer. What do you think? So, I mean, as you can imagine, anything that cohabitates with such a big king snake has gotta be kind of big and bad. And this, I mean, that's a big racer. Look at that. Look at the head on that thing. Just a meaty, meaty, meaty snake. No, no, I know what you're thinking. The, uh, the head on this racer is actually quite intimidating. I mean, look at that. He could swallow my whole finger without an issue if he so desired. Luckily for a racer, he's a little bit laid back. I mean, he did bite me the second I grabbed him, but other than that, he's been a little bit chill. But a really handsome snake, a good looking racer. Hanging out with a king snake. We're gonna let this guy go after uh whoa hello that was quite the lunge it's quite the lunge you executed all right mr mr racer back to your overwintering site with your buddy the king snake <laughs> that's so cool uh, here's a nice little double flip we got a ring neck and a common five line skink sharing the same rock here so the wind is picking up and it's actually starting to rain on us. So uh, we might be kind of limited on time here, but here's our second ring neck of the day. Kind of surprising we've only seen two of these guys, but there's not terribly much to flip out here. So I guess it's not that big of a surprise, but yeah, nice little ring neck and a little five line skink. All right, guys, Reed just flipped our next snake. This is a nice little brown snake. The rain is coming down pretty steady right now. So we're probably gonna end up at least temporarily relocating, but very nice. New species for the day. A nice decays brown snake. And I think this is actually the first one in this episode, too. Big <laughs> Midland water snake. <laughs> there right we go. Two water snakes sitting out in the rain. So it's, it's just actively raining now, but I managed to snag these two water snakes. I tried to record it. Don't know how well that came out, but... Two of them hanging out together right here on this little spillway. Look at this guy's belly. It's been a very good day out here despite the fact that it's just been kind of adverse weather for most of the day. It's either been windy or raining one. But we're getting it done. Two nice midlands. All right, so we got this guy. Yachten's got another one there. And then right here in the tree, there's a queen snake. All right, here's this queen snake. Now we've got queen, Nerodia, and another Nerodia. All in this, like, within feet of each other. Probably could have gotten them all in one picture from the right angle, but very nice. We're just gonna put these guys back in their respective spots and probably start making our way back towards the car. All right, guys, this is kind of interesting. I spotted a couple of fence lizards running around and we were able to nab a male and a female. So you can see the males will pretty much always have this very, very vibrant belly coloration, even in the winter. Uh, the only ones that won't are the very, very small ones. And then the females are always gonna have this solid kind of plain colored belly. And they're even a little bit different on top too. The males will have that kind of goldish coloration on the sides. Whereas the females, they still have it, but it's a lot more, uh, more camouflage oriented than display oriented. The males 
we use those vibrant colors on the sides and do push-ups just like an owls will. So really cool lizards, even though they're pretty common. So we're just gonna put them back where they were hanging out and keep working our way back towards the car. All right, guys, here you go. Here you go. Here's a nice pair of water snakes yacht and spotted. Those guys might actually be mating, so we're not gonna mess with them. Smaller male, bigger female. All right, so since that's almost certainly a pair and they're almost certainly gonna be mating here shortly if they're not already, we're not gonna mess with them. But two more water snakes for the total for the day. Not bad. Get them? Yeah. We got another one. There he is. He was well camouflaged. Oh yeah. Well, that is probably gonna be our last water snake of the day, unless we miraculously see another one somehow. But another pretty good looking one. This guy's a little more northern looking than a lot of the ones we've been seeing. But good looking snake either way. We'll put him back. All right, guys, well, it stopped raining and the sun is out, at least temporarily. Um, we're gonna go grab some lunch and then we're gonna flip at the house to wrap up the video. So we're gonna grab lunch real quick and I will check in with you guys when we get back home and start flipping again. All right, guys, we're back at the house walking around the pond now to wrap this video up. We didn't see anything flipping the tin, so we're out here shining at frogs. And we've seen quite a few species out here and there's pickerel frogs calling so hopefully we can see one of those but if we see anything uh, interesting I will definitely show you guys but here's a nice spring peeper this is the first one we've seen tonight so we've heard a couple calling but most of them have been very shy but you can hear that snoring in the background that is pickerel frogs calling that right there is a pretty distant pickerel frog. We're gonna try to get closer to him, but this is actually an adult. And a lot of the ones we've been seeing lately have been little juveniles, so. This is a welcome change. We saw one last night and we were able to get a good look at him, but I wasn't recording a video. You can see him right there. And once again, all those snoring calls you hear behind us are more pickerel frogs calling. There he is, pickerel frog, chilling out. There's another pickerel frog. This one's a huge adult. Look at that guy. Very nice. All right, guys, we have finished our lap of the pond and thus concluded our day. It has been a very eventful day. Lots of snakes, lots of amphibians. Just a good one all around. So we were able to turn up a couple of lifers for Reed, and that's always nice to help people find new species that they haven't seen before so it was a really enjoyable day in the field all around i think i'm going to wrap this one up here thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you all in the next episode